Well, good day to you all. This is uh, the, my lecture for the fourth module and it's going to be mostly talking about this idea of the politics and, and the digital realm. I'm, in, my, in my introductory notes to the module, I explained to you that I want to pay attention to the fact that when we talk about politics, we can talk about politics in two different um, ways. One is the politics or the political life that we normally have in society and how this political life uses digital networks and, and resources to expand and to reach out. But I also want to uh, bring to your attention the importance of understanding the intrinsic politics that pertain to understanding what's going on in the network and hence that was my question to you, who owns the internet? Because that's ultimately the main issue in terms of power for the internet. Who determines who has access? Who determines who has access at what speed and what not? So, um, let's, um, let's explore a little bit these two realms. I'm going to start with, uh, with one that is affecting us quite uh, deeply and evidently in, uh, this, um, uh, in this year of 2016 because we have uh, elections and we have been literally bombarded with messages and with ideas and you have um, two main contenders in the US and these contenders are trying to reach out and, and, and make us see things their way and, and we see all kinds of um, traditionally we have seen all kinds of TV ads and, and shows that will express the positions of the political parties, the two main political parties and then the, the, the um, alternative parties that are always uh, on the fringes, right? But um, we now live in a very different world in which it's other um, internet-based media outlets, the ones that are giving us maybe more detail in uh, maybe framing our decisions. I don't know how each of you uh, has made a decision. Maybe you have a prior decision as to your political inclination and you just sort of um, leaning towards whatever candidate is uh, closer to your to your views of things. But um, uh, I'm always wondering to what extent all the information that we, we're getting from, from these different outlets can and indeed might change our positions, I, I don't know. But it's definitely um, much more fluid and much more intense because we have information from many different uh, sites and, and, um, and outlets, as I was saying. Um, so there's definitely a growing uh, use of digital media by all kinds of political actors. Right, so it's uh, pol politicians, journalists, activists, pundits, religious leaders, all kinds of people that are uh, really using all these new media to um, to express positions and hopefully influence our decision when we go in and submit our ballot. Right, the the article that I'm asking you to read, the the chapter of the book that I'm asking you to read for this um, uh, module would be politicizing digital anthropology and uh, then it talks about the digital politics and political engagement. He, um, just to give you a sense of what he's doing in that chapter if you haven't read it, it's mostly a lit review, a pretty dry literature review you ask me, uh, on different books that are relevant to deepen our understanding. So if any of you um, is interested in going deeper into this topic. Uh, there's quite a few really good titles here that you might want to consider. There's the uh, Chadwick and Howard's um, the, on Internet Politics, uh, published by Routledge, Routledge. And then there's the Oates, Owen and Gibson, the Internet and Politics. So there's, there's quite a few uh, really interesting um, titles there for us to review. Uh, what these titles would do is to 
give us a um, an overview of the specific political lexicon or narratives and analysis that are there in the internet and, and explores to works and that is different from traditional media outlets, right? Um, another really interesting topic that it's uh, explored in the chapter in, 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 in some of the readings that the chapter is referring to is the extent to, what, to, to which the government is expanding and reaching out to citizens by means of digital connections. And that is also another realm of political action. This is sort of the, the, uh, the political action is not just the elections. The political action is all the things that we do to, ex to exercise our right to make decisions and to influence decisions that have to do with, the, as the, the, in Latin they would say, the res publica, the, the, the public thing, right? So that's the political life. And one important way in which we exert our political life is uh, through um, the action of the government and to what extent we can interact with the government and influence what the government is doing. When we get on the phone and call a representative, when we, when we go to the uh, office of the mayor or, um, or the city hall and, and state our opinion and request something, that's also political life. I don't know if you ever thought of it that way, but that's what it is. Democracy is not just going to the polling station and then and casting your ballot. Democracy is preparing for that. It's a plurality of events that uh, that we participate or not in. And that's um, nowadays it is important to consider to what extent the internet has expanded that possibility, or in some cases has maybe not uh, done what it could do in terms of giving us more, more opportunities for uh, interaction, right? Um, so it's politics in the sense of political parties contending, politics in the sense of government and governmentality, us interacting with the government. And then there's another uh, important, um, very important aspect of, uh, of the digital arena that is happening in our days and we're quite familiar with it and it is to what extent the new means that we have uh, because of the internet has enabled for stronger social movements and more vivid social movements so the um, uh, the the book and the article gives us a couple of examples that are of interest one is the zapatista movement I don't know if you're familiar with this, but in 1994 there was a, a rebellion in southern Mexico that was clearly uh, orchestrated against the impact that the North American Free Trade Agreement was going to have and actually did have on many rural communities in Mexico. It was in opposition to this neoliberal uh, um, movement and mentality that was really going against the the um, the understandings and the way of life for many uh, rural communities, particularly in the southernmost part of Mexico, where you have more of a communal tradition going on. So, whereas neoliberalism is um, giving a lot of emphasis to individual work and property, communal life sees as much more important the community and collective action, right? So there was obviously a clash of, of worldviews and it was represented in this uh, movement. Now, the movement had really clear in um, as, as uh, an understanding that uh, without massive support from the outside, they will be smashed and obliterated by the central Mexican government. So they lean on, for the first time, and this is quite interesting, for the first time, they lean extensively on, on uh, media to represent their ideas and their needs and what was going on. And it really made a difference in that the Mexican state was unable to exert all its power in isolation because it was very much so visible. And, and then you have, after the Zapatista movement, which is, in my opinion, the first big successful social movement that leans on the internet to to empower itself. And you have all kinds of mobilizations from the Arab Spring 
to the uh, 15 de, de marzo in Spain, to the Take Wall Street in the U.S. and many other movements that have been really, the dynamics of the movement were really potentiated by the use, by the very smart and clever use of, um, of digital uh, tools that you folks of your age group handled so well. So um, it's, it's an interesting article in that uh, it really gives us uh, not just elements of judgment and analysis, but it gives us also specific case studies for us to explore and to see how the internet and the politics um, mingle together. Uh, later on in the, in the article, the author also um, explores uh, his participation in the 15M, uh, 15 de Marzo, which was this uh, sort of a take Wall Street, the first take Wall Street uh, uh, movement in Spain, and that eventually gave way to different political parties, particularly Podemos. It's a new political party in Spain that, that stem out of, um, of this um, massive movement uh, against uh, the traditional ways of doing pol uh, politic in, in Spain. Um, Spain is a changed um, landscape in politics, although right now it seems to be on, a, on an interesting, uh, um, uh, not collapse, but Spain right now has, has had two elections unsuccessfully um, in that they were unable to determine who was going to be leading the government, so they've been without a government for over a year. So they have an acting government, but they haven't been able to to have a clear winner of the elections. And that's because traditionally they have only had two political parties uh, like we have here in the States, but now they have four major political parties and none of the political parties have enough votes to be able to, to, to hold the power. And there's just no agreement between the political parties. So they are a little bit paralyzed. It's interesting what's going on in Spain and troubling in certain ways. All right, so um, in, in a nutshell, that's what the article uh, that we're going to be reading uh, for this module is about, so it's the politics and the internet. So um, I, I'm not assigning more readings because this um, for this module I'm asking you to also do some assessment work for me. So um, focus on the assessment primarily, of course, um, I would like to see your annotation for this chapter. but. Um, Let's. Um, I, I'm hoping that with your recordings, I will be able to see how much of the readings you are retaining, and also what are your specific interests and how you're framing your interests. And I think I will know that by uh, looking at your at your preference in terms of uh, of those uh, reports. I posted four uh, options, and you're expected to select two, and then uh, give me a recording of it. All right, well, have a great uh, week, and um, um, I look forward to uh, looking at your postings, your videos, very much like this one. And do not hesitate to contact me if you have any questions. See you around.